Okay, this will be the official assembly video for the Jedi Killer lightsaber. Um, let's go ahead and get right to it. Let's open the box up. So it'll come in a package like this, everything bagged and set up like that. We're gonna take everything out, put it all to the side, and we'll talk about some the different pieces here. Okay, take the main saber out of the bag. You'll see that it's already seems like it's pretty assembled and it is there's a little bit more to do but um, I will show you how to do that in this video so we got the main saber here the chamber is full copper and brass you want to make sure that everything is a little bit that these little rings are nice and tight because they actually screw down to hold it steady so they don't come apart. Let's see, where's the camera hole? There we go. This is the top section here. So it will go down in the chamber like this. And it simply slides in from the top. It's a straight through shot. The chamber fully disassembles with these small brass rings. They pop off. Your copper is going to be discoloring. It's just, it's natural copper, so there is no um, coating on it, so it will age. But it all disassembles and comes apart if you really want to get to it. One little secret that not many people know about right now is that there is two crystals inside of here. So if you look inside of this little uh, steel tube here with the holes, you use something like a little poker. You can push inside of it and you recognize that there are two little crystals. One came out from this side, and one's up on the other side. Oh, this thing is bent, I'm gonna have to use something different. Let's use this one. Push this in. Or we'll push it this way through. Okay, so you got two crystals inside of here. The idea would be that when you're ready, when they're installed, you can put just a little dab of super glue in there and push it in and lock it down. You can have a little pixel cut out for it if you want, whatever you like. But the idea is you can see them when they're lit up, but you could also take a small pair of clippers and potentially clip away some of these holes and then take a small nail file or a small file like this and make a little bit of damage to the crystal chamber or to this uh, this plasma gate here um, and then make it so the crystals can be seen better. It's a cool little accent and personalization you can add to your plasma gate in the middle. So there's my crystals. Let me not lose those. Where'd the other one go? Uh-oh. Already losing things. Must be blind. Oh no, I stuck it back in. So it's inside. Okay, so those are good. This won't stick in from here because it's too small from the copper side. So it either needs to be disassembled or you just simply put it in from the bottom end. Because they meet in the middle like that. Okay, there's that. I have a little baggie right here. with some goodies. So this tool, um, it's good for pushing the crystal in and out and that's about it. It's a 1.3 millimeter um, socket. So the problem is your screws on here are actually 1.5 and two millimeter. So you're gonna need a little tool, either normal Allen wrenches or a special little tool set with a 1.5 and a two millimeter hex head or Allen key. 
You got your red wire. There is a lot of extra red wire. If you want to just imagine this put in, you can see how much extra red wire there is. So when you're fine tuning the placement, you're going to want to cut the rest off. Um, but be careful not to cut it too short. I gave you a lot of length, but uh, it's still possible to cut it too short. Wait till cut until the very, very end. The rest of this packet, you have three switches in here. Two switches are needed. Third one is a spare. I did this because there's a little bit of modification you need to do to the switch with a small file. Um, it only takes a minute to do it, but if anything happens to the switch, you have a spare. If for some reason you damage multiple switches, let me know. I will let you know what switches they are. They're pretty common to find. They have some Greeblies. Magnets are attached already. One, two, three. And they fit directly on the saber already, and they're already polarized, so you can't put them on incorrectly. And you have your little switch pillbox here with these rubberized inserts or silicone inserts. Next is the blade plug. Your blade plug here is a two-part construction. It screws out from the acrylic. As you can see, it's a nicely detailed turbine engine type of thing, single piece, and it's out of stainless steel. So you can paint it if you like, or you may actually do a real heat stain on it or a blacken on it as you like. So you have some options. Now, because this is steel threaded into uh, acrylic, you you don't need to twist it ultra hard because you will break the acrylic. I mean, you can you can snug it up well, and that's all you need to do. It's not coming loose unless you actually physically take it loose. You have your nameplate, two parts, extruded aluminum stand, and then your uh, polished steel plate. Normally, this will come off, and this slides right into the uh, the sides. There is a, each of them are numbered, so no problem there. Okay, so now we're going to move along to the actual assembly. So we'll do some quick things here. First is this little piece here. You can see it has a guaranteed location. If you try to put it in wrong, it just won't fit. The polarity is incorrect. So you put it in correct. Fits in there pretty well, though. It's got a nice little home. Boom. Fits on. Now we've got our next one here. Same idea. Polarity is set already. It won't sit down that way, but it likes to go home that way. Last one is this one. You're going to have to, you're going to take this one off uh, for now, but just showing you where it goes. Let's tighten this down a little bit. Screw it a little loose. Same idea. Sits right in. Now these Greeblies are on there pretty well. You can't take them off by shaking them, hitting them. Got a little bit of a looseness here. You can pop them off with your finger by getting up under them. So if you're planning on doing a lot of swinging with them, I would, I would caution you to put a little dab of glue underneath these on the metal to metal just to give it a little extra support, but not hold it forever. These two on the top hold very well. This one also holds very well, but if you really pop it, it can come off. Oh, it looks like we're missing a little magnet here or the magnet stuck. So if you get magnets coming off, you're going to want to just glue them back down. It's just a little dab of super glue in there to hold it down. This is the one that's more likely to come off because of its design, because of the way it sits here. So you're going to want to, once it's assembled, if you're planning on doing any kind of swinging around with it, you're going to want to put the dab of glue on here to keep it down. When it's on there and the magnets are in there correctly, it won't come off, but the minute you twist at it with your hand, you're going to lose it. And because of its location, where your hand goes, it's going to be fairly easy to knock it off. So be very careful with that. Okay, so we'll take these off for the moment. 
Yeah, and you can see how the magnet has come apart there. So you just need to make sure they're glued in well. Now the next step, we're gonna take the 1.5 millimeter, gonna remove these screws here. Since there's magnets, all you gotta do is, oh, if you can, stick them on the magnets on those parts so you don't lose them. Piece comes off. And it won't go, it won't slide up because there's a catch right here that stops it. So you're gonna have to separate it. Now the separation does come in multiple locations. So it separates at the top of the waist and at the bottom of the waist. So here we separate like this. Now this is, I'm gonna disassemble the bottom now. You can see the waist also comes off. You can see in here that there are four holes along this threaded area in order to screw down your chassis um, when you do put it in. Not necessary if you're not doing a chassis, but that's how it is. The back end unscrews like this, and cap comes off. There's a little plate here. You can just stick your finger in there, and you should be able to get it. Once this plate is off, now your birdcage on the bottom can come off. And this construction is made of two pieces here also. Okay, now you'll notice there's lots of little details here along that upper edge. So what I would suggest is if you're doing some weathering or whatever, just get in there with a little bit of sandpaper and, and hit the edges of that and bring out the silver so the black stays on the bottom. That'll highlight your, your details much nicer. Okay, so these just simply go back in like that. And the birdcage would come back on. Now keep in mind, this birdcage has a specific location. So if you look around the edges, you'll see that there's a spine piece right here. This is where this piece fits in. Little pegs, right? So the spine also has a notch. So when you put these fingers on, you wanna make sure that your spine piece lines up. This one just goes in here. These threads are pretty easy. They come open and, and close pretty well. If you like, put a little, uh, put a little dab of grease on them if you need. Um, if you wanna make them a little smoother, that's up to you. Put this back, okay. So what I haven't told you about right now is the t things you're going to need before you start. So my suggested tools are you're going to want a little pair of pliers. Any kind of little pair will do, just not these massive ones. Those are hard to work with. Um, I like to have a little pair of clippers, either metal clippers or wire clippers, something like that, because there's a few little things you got to clip off. Um, I personally have this little tool set. Um, I've got a lot more pieces to it, but this is what I need. I need a, a, a 1.5 millimeter and a 2 millimeter hex. I like having a little uh, small file, small metal file for any jobs that need to be done. And I also have a little bit of super glue here. This is going to be need, needed to be used in a few times when you're doing the assembly, no problem. It's very simple to take care of it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So we've already taken the shroud off. You can see the shroud has some pretty awesome little details in here, like these corroded, burned out areas. Weathering really can make them stand out really well by hitting the edges of all of them. But whether you weather it or not is up to you. Uh -huh. You got your core here. You're going to notice you have two little blocks on opposite sides. One has the two holes, this is where your switch is going to rest. And on the back side, this is simply a, a support structure. So this doesn't ever need to come off, it just sits right here. And you'll see that the screws don't come through in the back, so they're not going to affect anything. So first step here, we're going to get our switch in. Um, if you're just purely doing a display, you can skip this part because you don't need switches inside. 
make sure we don't lose our screw. And you'll see inside of this item here, you have two little fixed locations. Now on the back of this switch plate, there are also little fixed locations you can see. So the, the switch will fit in very specifically. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna open this little thing, a little plastic cover on it, pull one of the switches out. Now, in order to get the switches to fit, it's a very tight fit in here. And because these cutouts have small um, roundings on the corners, the switches don't fit by default. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to get your nail file, take one of your little switches. Now I'm not gonna take these switches out because they're for somebody. You're gonna to wanna to take the little switch you got and you're gonna to wanna to just hold it firmly in your hand and you're gonna to wanna to take this file and just file down the corners of the metal and the plastic just enough. You wanna file these down so they're not quite square anymore. So they match the rounding basically of the of the piece you have to fit into. It takes you a few minutes, a little bit of trial and error. So file it down, file it down, file it down. And then you're going to want to try to get it to fit. I like to get it to fit into this piece more importantly than the bottom piece. And you're gonna have, the switches by default are gonna have four legs. So two here and two here. And they're gonna have a third leg that actually sits off of this little metal housing. That's just a ground. You can snip that with your little snippers. Just clip the ground off when it sits there. It's not required. And then you pick two, two posts, snip the other two off, and then file back the others because only two are needed to switch it. Okay, so you end up with a switch like this. And you're going to want to take your little, uh, your little pliers and you want to bend these legs down so they go into the holes here. See? Okay. So the key here is getting it to fit within this upper. So this one is already pre-filed, so I know it fits. Clips in there nice and secure. See? And with some support, get little clicky sounds. Okay. So now that you have one in, of course you want to get two, and you're going to want to make sure that the posts here are matched up with the holes. This is going to sit right in place. And if it's in the upper, if it's locked inside this upper piece here, then it should fit well within the lower piece too. Okay. So you're going to want to put both switches in. If you're doing the installation, screw this back down. Of course, your wires are going to have to come through and you're going to have to solder those on, um, but we're not going to cover installation in this video. And now you got a switchy. While this is open, we might as well get into this. So adding your chamber, it's very simple. This slotted area here is basically facing you. So hold this flat and then just slide this in. There may be a little roughness to the slide in, you have to see what, um, if possible, if there are any screws that are pushing down. Like for instance, here you have this set screw, which right here, which looks to be a little bit engaged. This is using the 1.5 millimeter. Let's back that off a little bit. And you'll also notice you have your blade retention using, oh, sorry, this is the two millimeter. This is the 1.5 blade retention. Bring it up a little bit. So this hole itself is an M4. This hole is an M3, just so you know. These are all using metric sizes. Okay, so we move that off a little bit. Sometimes there's a little bit of flack inside here that'll get it caught up or a little flack on here. So if that happens, we'll just face it when it comes. I have a little trouble fitting it in. Let's see what's stopping it. We got something sticking in a little bit, maybe a little bit left over from the hole. Let's see. Where are you getting stuck? 
feels like it's getting stuck in this blade retention a little bit. This little nail file can come in handy or this little metal file can come in handy too. If there's a little bit of scrap on this hole still that's catching it, you can just get rid of that easily and try it again, see what happens. Ah, I see what's actually happening this time. This little piece is not properly, there we go. So you see, there's a little flat edge on this rear tube where your wiring is gonna go through. If this is off to the side, it won't fit. It had to be shaved down to make a nice straight area. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that's not twisted and that should fix the problem. It a little bit. Flatten that out. There we go. There we go. Nice and easy. Okay. Careful with these brass things. You don't want to rank on them too much, but you can use them as a little bit of a turning leverage to get them in straight. Okay, so this piece, you're gonna to wanna to bring it down so it's just level right there. So what's gonna happen, you'll notice if it's too far down, it's gonna run into the, the post of the switches. So you can have it sticking up just a little bit. You know, this, where this edge sticks up a little bit, but the ideal is where it's perfectly level. Once you got that location, flip back over here to your two millimeter set screw and tighten this one up. Now your chamber's in there, it's not going anywhere. And now you can see your chamber installed. Remember I said you could cut out these little holes, if you will. And then get some uh, get some good visibility inside the crystals there. Now that that's in, next thing we have to do is just slide this back in. Now this only slides in from this way. It won't slide in this way because of the the details on the bottom here. Yes. What is sticking up? What am I grabbing on? Ah, okay. So this little set screw has gone out a little too much. There we go. You see, it'll, it'll come up higher, but it'll find its location because of the screw holes we have to put in here in a second. And you'll also notice you know, the, the switch comes to the right location. So once you got this in the right place, you want to find your holes for your big greebly. And this plate goes down. And the screw goes in. I stick the screw in all the way here. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Harder with a magnet. Put it in the bottom. Okay, screw down here. Let's find our location again, switch in place. There we go. This is using our 1.5 millimeter. I'll just use my fingers. Goes in, no problem. Next one goes in. No problem. Now, the next is this little switch cap. Now, these are two little silicone inserts that are um, meant to press down on the switches. Now, when you put these switches in, you're gonna, when you do the final assembly, uh, you're gonna wanna put a little bit of epoxy or super glue here to hold these down. 
So you want to be careful though with the when you're doing the installation, you need to have this this cap shaved down to the exact location so you get the right kind of um, engagement. Because right now the the caps are just a little bit long. So when you put this down, if you were to actually physically push it down, you can hear it engaging that switch. That means the cap on the switch is just a touch too long. So you just need to get in there with the file on the switch and just give it a little bit of test, just a little bit of file down to get it right. And then once you have it so it's in a perfect location, it should be able to be held down like this. And then with just a little press of this rubber insert here, you should feel the switch click. So when you glue this down, you simply want to dab a glue and you want to let it sit there with gravity. That'll give you the perfect location where you're not engaging it too hard. That's a little bit of a finicky switch, but that's what we do in order to make the most amazing replicas we can, is we have to do very creative things to get our switches to work. Okay, so pull this off. Again, these slip on. Let me do this. So if you notice that your magnets are acting goofy, very simple. What I like to do is if it's not already done, scratch up the bottom end a little bit because this anodizing, sometimes the glue sticks well to the anodizing and sometimes it needs a little bit of extra help. Make sure there's no dust in there. When you do this, ensure that you're, if you take these magnets out, that you're doing it in the right uh, polarity because if you do it reverse, you're gonna have to take it off again. So we know this has gone to the bottom. Let's make sure our magnet is the correct polarity. Okay, so this is my bottom end. So I'm gonna take this file, just give it a little bit of a roughing on there to help with the glue. And that also helps me locate which side is which. So if I pull this out now, you can see I have a little bit of a sanded side and a nice pretty side. So sanded side is the one I'm working on right now. So we're gonna take, we're gonna put just a very small dab of super glue. Boom. That's gonna, because it fits so well, it's gonna be pushed out into all the corners and really lock it down. And remember, our filed side engages with, oh, our filed side engages with the glue. So a clean side here get that on location. And just let that sit there for now. Don't put this on right away because the glue hasn't set, which means the magnet will be, pull, will be pulled back up again. You can also check your other magnets at the same time and see if, I mean, don't pull on them too hard, but you know, see if they're loose enough. If they come off, when you take these off, you know they're too loose, like this one. Let's go ahead and do this one right here. Same idea. Give it a little bit of roughing. We also know that this one is the matching hole. A little bit of roughing. Okay. Again, tiny drop of glue in here. Boom, it's a very small hole. Don't forget that the rough side goes to the glue, so your polarity is correct. <laughs> Magnets are fantastic. Oh, which side is the rough side? Uh-oh. Let's see, it goes in like this, it goes to the top. So, make it a bit more obvious. We'll stick it on here, it's on location. It's a tight fit, so you're gonna wanna do your best to get it in there correctly.
And there we go. If you have any super glue left over, no problem. Just get your finger in there or a Q-tip. Just to get the excess off. And let it sit there. This other one should be in there nice and tight. These two as well. Because they didn't come off. So we're going to let those sit for a moment and we'll come back to them in a second. So you have your waste again. Back together. Screw these back together. Let's move this stuff off the side here. Switch this to the side. This to the side. Okay. And this little bag here, you've got your wire holders. And you see they're all pretty long. You have some that are the same and some that are different. So you'll notice that there are seven plus one. Now, this one looks different because it's more rounded. Let's see if we can focus on this one. See, it's not really like these other ones, which are with a straight. Now, there's a reason for this. It's a different piece. One of these is extra in case you cut it or something goes wrong. So the idea here is that when you're putting the wires in, you'll see that there are matched locations all along the body. So your first one is here, here, in the waist, down deep inside of the waist, coming up on the body. You have a single hole right here. This is for the more rounded one. You have a second set of holes here, and then the wire finally ends up going into this little hole on the side. Now, based on the anodizing and the size of the wire, you may need to get in there with a little drill um, and expand the holes, these final holes, where it rests in order to get a good, um, a good solid fit. One thing to keep in mind is when you're putting this wire on and you have your final locations, you'll see down here on the red area is a little hole. You might want to expand that because the paint sometimes gets in the way. Take a little drill with like a 2.5 or 3 millimeter drill and put it in so it'll fit in there better. Um, when this wire is in and fixed, you're not going to be able to open the saber anymore. So I would suggest that when you put them in, that you maybe add a little bit of glue to the top or not. It's up to you. Um, but definitely not to the bottom. Because what happens is if you lock both the sides in, you can no longer unscrew the saber. Okay? So you're going to want to keep one side at least that you can unplug it and then unthread it from little pieces. See, if we look like this, these are basically going to go in to these holes. You're going to need to make sure that if they're a little bit too closed or whatever, that they're hard to fit in. If you have any troubles with them fitting in, you can just get in there with a little, um, little something to expand the hole a little bit. See, this, when this one was cut, it expanded the foot a little bit. So let's crimp that up. So what you're going to want to do also is... If you're just displaying this, it's no problem. You can, you can put these in their location, slide them down inside, and it's no problem. But what you're going to notice, let me open this up again. Is that this one's fitting pretty tight. Let's see if I can get in a different hole a little easier.
I guess I have to do a little bit of modification. File these edges down a touch to get them to fit. But that's why we have a file handy. This is a building kit. Okay. This one fits a bit better right now. So these can go in and sink in. Let's see if you can see it. Now, it's not pushed in there very far. It's not pushed in there enough right now. It's still sticking up quite a bit. So your wire, what you want to do is you want to get this down enough that it holds the wire, but not that it holds the wire crazy hard. Because if you want to ever open this inside of it, you're going to need to be able to thread this wire in and out. So you want to get it down a bit to the right location that you feel that it's deep enough, but not too deep. But that you can still actually manage to get the wire in and out of it. Um, and then you're going to want to notice how deep these are. If you want a chassis, that's not going to work. It's going to be bumping up into your chassis immediately. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to pull this back out. Once you find out how deep you want it to be, pull it back out. And you're going to have to note how much you have to cut off the bottom of it. And then you can get your wire clippers and just cut off whatever extra was hanging inside. Once you've cut off the extra, you know, put just a little dab of glue on these legs and then push it right back in. And then you'll have you'll have it right in the right depth, but when you've cut it, it won't have any legs dipping inside of there. And you're going to want to do that with every location here. Again, like I said, if you need, you can take a little uh, 1.5 or 2.5 millimeter drill bit and um, and expand these holes a little bit in order to get these to fit in a little better. So you're going to want to place these all along in every hole location. <clears throat> you're going to see you have it on this one as well. You have these two here and these two here. Same idea. These are going to be put inside the holes there and then inside the holes here. Again, expanding as necessary. Going up, doing it here. Now you'll see here cable is actually going to bump into the actual metal. So you're going to, installation or not, you're going to need to trim these ones down a little bit. A little tight. We'll use the one I've already filed down a little bit. And as this is supposed to be a weathered, battle-damaged, used saber, don't worry too much about the damage that you're doing to these little wire holders with pliers. You can always touch it up with black if you want it to be perfect. Um, but my personal opinion is that it adds to the detail on the saber when there's some damage to it. So these little legs might not be able to see it, but they're going to go down and impact with the metal down there. So again, you're going to want to trim it down slowly and surely until you get the right height of the, um, the piece. Now th this little round one, what you're going to want to do is you need to do a little bit of reshaping with this to get it a little more like so. So you have a nice loop with a leg. Now this leg, once you file it down correctly, will fit within this little hole and then it becomes a loop simply to hold the wire. Now the hole's still a little small. Again, you can take that little drill bit, make it a little bit deeper, a little bit wider in order to get this to fit, or just simply shave this down a bit. A little dab of glue in here will get the wire to... Oh, losing it already. It's a little fat right now because of the, the crimping. Let's give it a little bit of a shave and a haircut here. Doesn't need much. This 
the wire shaves pretty quickly. And once it's glued in there, your wire will then thread all the way through, come through here, and go to the next one. And here, it's not going to stick in very well down there because I haven't glued it in. But you're going to thread it right down through this one. You could even thread it through first and then stick it in before you glue it. Something like this. Bring it through, I'm going to set it in the next one, and then again, this is the final location here. It's going to hit this last shape, and it's going to tip up like that. And that's how it is. It holds right in there in location. You can see it's a little bit long right now, so you're going to want to modify the length. Like that. Okay, so pull it out so I don't lose it. Tighten her up. Blade plug, pretty straightforward. It fits in. Goes a little bit deeper because it sits on top of the chamber. Oh, looks like I lost something. Oh, that's the crystal. So, depends on how you like it. If you want it sticking up more, you can always adjust it, get it to the location, and then use your little hidden retention, and there you go. I'm sure you'll see the crystal now. Yep, crystal fell out. So that is the assembly, obviously not assembled, but you know the idea of what you need to do to get it all together. So thank you everybody for joining this run and uh, good luck with the builds.